And here is Stefano with the translation. Добрый uh, день, коллеги, дамы и господа. Я думаю, что мы... Ladies and gentlemen, I think our, most of our session will be in Russian. One of the speakers, uh, though, doesn't speak Russian uh, very well and will allow him to speak English. Uh, however, most of our audience is uh, Russian speakers and will uh, speak in Russian. You can switch to the language you like better. I am Igor Komensante. I am general director of VK, uh, oriented towards the development of venture market in Russia, and will discuss entrepreneurial landscape and the role of financial institutions. Today, our colleague from Italy and the head of technical secretariat of the Ministry of Economic Development, Stefano Firpo, and Natalia Kaspersky is with us today, general director of InfoWatch companies. Vadim Ilyin is also here. <coughs> Vadim Ilyin is a partner of Ernst & Young. Kirill Tikhanov, uh, vice president of Promsvers Bank, is also here. I think it's a good panel from government business consulting and financial institutions. And today we'll try to speak about the role of the government and financial institutions in creating favorable conditions for the development of technological markets. It's, uh, it's not only entrepreneurship that's um, of interest to us. I've just said in the interview that entrepreneurship is about bakeries, 24 hours shops and networks of restaurants. However, this is simple business. As to good business in new technologies, ideas, intellectual products, intellectual property, and you will see that it is no easy task. However, many succeed in these areas, and big companies develop in these areas. The biggest companies today are companies that have grown um, on the basis of ideas and on, not on traditional assets. What should be done to develop it effectively, not only in this country, but in the rest of the globe? And there are quite successful startups. There are many countries quite developed uh, who, that are not centers of technological entrepreneurship. And their task is uh, the development of the venture market, which is a traditional instrument for supporting technological entrepreneurship in the world. It is developing uh, globally and in this country. Which ca markets are the largest? Well, I think that our discussion will be built around these issues. Just for a start, I suggest a presentation of Ernst & Young, a partner, Vadim Elin, who will just make a review of Ernst & Young report, and <clears throat> he will provide information on the development of global venture investments market, and including Russia, in the last five years. After that, I will express my position, the way I see uh, the current events, and then we'll have a free discussion. Uh, the floor is yours, Vadim. Thank you very much. I'm prepared to tell you 
about our study of the venture investments market in Russia and in the world from 2008-2013. I would say that our study, which we made together with RVK, uh, was a unique one. <coughs> its unique nature consists in two uh, aspects. First, we took a long period of time from the moment the market was born in 2007 till the stage of uh, till a mature stage in 2012 when it grew to a significant extent and the second aspect is <clears throat> when we looked When we approached the subject, when we looked at the statistics and analytics uh, that existed at that time, <clears throat> we realized that there is no information of a general nature. So we had to use a number of Russian global sources. Plus, beginning with 2011, we maintained our own statistics on transactions and actually we got the fullest uh, study of Russian uh, markets that ever existed. <clears throat> Speaking of what we were analyzing, I would note that a standard analysis was made. We looked at the market in dynamics year by year. We looked at the market <clears throat> from the industrial point of view, what sectors of economy <clears throat> were funded through venture capital. We looked at the mature stage of investment uh, objects, and we looked at other statistics on investments. Besides, we made a survey of a great number of leaders in venture investments in Russia and some interesting statements of these persons are also presented in the report. <clears throat> I would like to start with the most interesting thing based on our information in 2012 Russia became the second market in Europe after the UK and the second in the fifth market in the world. We were ahead of such developed con markets in terms of venture capital as Germany and Israel. <clears throat> If you look at the next slide, you will see that the market uh, from 2007 has grown significantly. From 2007 to 2012, the growth rate was 100%. <coughs> Speaking of 2012, we have really reached a significant value over uh, one um, um, billion to 200 million US dollars. We also exp think that a number of transactions made at this stage were not part of our study. This is the classical funnel for investments pipeline. If you look at the material stage of a company, you can see <clears throat> that based on 2012 statistics, most of transactions, over half of them, was on startup stage. And at the same time, the average amount of transaction was about $500,000. <clears throat> There are much more um, significant deals at the stage of the product development and its uh, better testing. There are a lot of such um, 
um, deals and uh, the amount is over three million dollars speaking of big transactions uh, that are still venture transactions we saw about uh, three uh, thirty um, uh, such transactions with the average amount of 800 million uh, this is a similar transaction, not based on the stage of development of the company, but based on rounds. Here you can see a brief uh, analysis where you see different stages of investment. Speaking of uh, 2011, 12, and 13, uh, you can see certain stabilization in terms of the transaction amount. At the seed stage, the average amount is about $500,000, which correlates with startup stage, speaking of the maturity of the company that is themselves. Then a round about uh, $2.5, $3.5 million, B round <coughs> The average transaction is over $10 million. In, it varies from year to year. C and C plus are transactions of about uh, 40 and more million dollars. We can see these amounts, which correlate quite well with global statistics, with the exception of the United States. <laughs> where the average amount of transactions is much higher. As to industry and market segmentation, <clears throat> the statistics speaks for itself. In fact, the whole Russian market, almost 90% of it, are investments in IT or consumer market, <coughs> consumer sector. In our classification that we followed, consumer sector included consumer internet, e-commerce, media, tourism, and <coughs> all this. are parts of the market which depend on IT solutions to a great extent. And the engine for these companies is IT too. In principle, this correlates with international trends. I would say that Russia is lagging behind in <coughs> in farm, uh, pharmaceutical industry and biotechnologies. Maybe these are the areas where we can expect certain development in the near future. <coughs> what else worries Russian venture investments? Exits. <coughs> Here you can see certain positive dynamics, and in the slide that is shown now, you can see the biggest transactions from 2011, 2013. We can say <coughs> that in Russia there are much fewer exits uh, in, uh, than many of the investors would like. It can be explained by the fact that our venture market is very young, venture capital market is very young, and in this period, primary investment uh, occurred and the average time for the exit based on the market or industry is from five years or more. We can say that in the near future, if the dynamics are positive, so we'll see more exits. And this is very important for the maturity of the market as a whole, because only good positive dynamics of exits will allow 
venture capital to continue developing, developing and attract new funds. We'll show the statistics that are interesting to the market, and this will provide an additional impulse for venture investments and venture business as such. I would like to draw a line under this. This slide that I have shown is only a small part of the study that we made. <coughs> I would like to outline the main conclusions. There are not too many exits for investors. <clears throat> and what is also important, we can't see too many exits through M&A. When big Russian companies would acquire uh, young, fast-growing companies. and. There are not too many M and A international M and A transactions. I could name a couple of uh, big transactions in that period covered by our study. I haven't discussed in great detail the statistics of venture funds as such. However, we can say that currently we are at the stage which is far from consolidation on the whole. Today, a big number of small and medium uh, size funds in the market. We <coughs> don't expect all of them to last long. <coughs> and there will be some sort of consolidation, or some of them may fail, or there will be um, the mergers and acquisitions of smaller companies. However, we can't say that any of the funds dominates in the market and is much uh, bigger than others. Another important thing that we noted in our study is that the ecosystem itself of venture investments, the ecosystem of startups is quite fragmented now, and we expect subsequent development of the ecosystem, which will allow Russian market to become more mature, uh, stronger, and stable. As to the Russian market, this market is a risky one even for such a risky business as venture business. However, it is in demand and attracts interest of uh, uh, both Russian and international players, and we expect positive dynamics in this area. <clears throat> That's all I meant to say. Thank you very much, Vadim. Now I would like to add a few things to what Vadim has told us. I think it's extremely interesting, and it confirms the studies and the statements made by big players in the market uh, lately, <coughs> as you know, based on the results of 2012, Dow Jones um, regarded, uh, named Russia as the fastest growing venture market in Europe. Uh, Europe is uh, the fifth in Europe. However, based on venture source, they were quite fragmented and did not uh, <clears throat> take into account all the segments of the market. So a lot of uh, transactions <clears throat> remained unnoticed. Uh, anyway, uh, Russia was the first in Europe based on the pay, uh, rate of growth. In 2012, on the one hand, you can see a certain drop. On the other hand, a dramatic drop that could be seen in the graphs. It's for nine months, actually, now, not for 2013. So the drop is smaller than one could uh, uh, imagine. 
I would like to provide some comments. If we speak about 2013, <clears throat> the statistics that are shown in the graph can be explained by two reasons. On the one hand, it is nine months. And the second thing, what we saw in 2012 is more or less real information on 2013 will be available um, in the middle of 2014 because information on uh, transactions always lags behind. <coughs> Actually, we are sure that in 2013, the result will be higher as compared to 2012. And <clears throat> we think it will be about $1 billion. More accurate information will be available in the middle of 2014. Actually, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that a slowdown is possible in absolute figures. There is a kind of drops, but as you have noticed, the number of transactions is not decreasing. They are kind of smaller now, and <clears throat> the um, revaluation in startups could be adjusted accordingly. So in three years, the market has grown by 10 times, which is a unique case in the history. We have never seen it, but this is what happened in this area. Интерпретировать, можно обсуждать, можно оценивать, но спорить с ним э, трудно. И мне хотелось бы сейчас попробовать посмотреть на это с разных сторон, с точки зрения, скажем, э, и предпринимателя, с точки зрения государства. Вот, э, наверное, первый вопрос я э, Наталье Касперской задам. Вот как с точки зрения предпринимателя там, на протяжении уже очень длительного времени работающего в высокотехнологичном инновационном бизнесе. Uh, so I would like to ask Natalia Kasperska uh, what she thinks about the market in terms of demand and accessibility of capital and whether there are interesting uh, projects that, that would attract foreign investments. So if we um, take a look from uh, in investors and entrepreneurs' uh, um, point of view, what can you say? Because if we uh, um, uh, take uh, a perspective, um, uh, system integrator's perspective, then they say that the market is always on, on decline. And so what do you think about it? It's a very interesting statistics that you have given. Of course, the market of venture capital uh, uh, is lagging behind as compared to Europe and the US. The venture capital uh, reached Russia at a very late stage. I remember back in uh, 2000, uh, I was looking for investments for Kaspersky Laboratory, and of course, um, it was impossible to find uh, investments uh, in Russia. So we had to go to the US and couldn't raise funds in the US. And um, this antivirus um, market was not fashionable enough. Uh, the internet um, uh, was in fashion. So there was uh, then a collapse of dot com. So it's a very interesting um, venture story. So it was really hard to uh, attract money uh, in the early 2000s. Uh, we couldn't get any loans because we didn't have assets. Uh, so we didn't have a, a right ecosystem. You couldn't um, get anyone that would be interested. That could be interested in investment. Of course, it's uh, clear that it was very difficult for the company to develop, and the market was very new. So we could develop only using our own funds and money. Of the labor market now is different. The um, salaries uh, that programmers get. Uh, um, 
are uh, start uh, um, uh, um, uh, with uh, 60,000 and basically this is the salary that we give to post um, just st uh, students uh, fresh students from the uh, universities but if you want to get uh, an experience program uh, we have to pay 120,000 as a salary um, so, um, the, um, actually, most countries pay much less to programmers than we pay here in Moscow, and salaries in Moscow are much higher than anywhere in Europe. So, uh, it's um, very important to um, attract uh, funds. Uh, this is a vital condition if the company wants to survive. So, it's important to um, um, provide the funds for the company. Speaking about the projects, in the last five to seven years, I don't uh, look at the market as an entrepreneur. It, I'm trying to look at it. as an investor, because our company um, is interested in new projects uh, that we want to attract uh, into our holding. And that's much more difficult. We have very few interesting projects. This is probably common to other countries of the world. Yes, there are lots of startups, lots of problems related to e-commerce that uh, duplicate some Western projects. For example, look at this uh, project X, uh, and uh, we are going to become Google number two, but it's not clear why they should become Google number two. So I try to invest some money in e-commerce and uh, internet startup company, but um, I no longer do this. Now we are considering some projects related to information security projects. There are interesting companies, but they usually have some problems. The biggest problem that the Russian company have is lack of marketing thinking, market focus thinking. Usually the managers um, of these companies uh, have technical background, so uh, they um, uh, came up with some product, they, um, um, are go they know that it's a great product that they have, but they don't know how they're going to sell this product. So it's not always that the consumer needs this product, so it's important to market it well. So then we have all kinds of um, issues, or oh, these consumers, they don't understand much. Uh, they don't want to buy our product. Uh, why is that? So I have invested one of such projects. And um, the programmers that work there are really stubborn. They say, we are developing this great product. We just need money. And I asked, why don't you want to make some money first? So we're not ready to make money yet because we have to create this magical product that is going to be a, ro a rocket flying into the space. So they are working on this product, but the investor is going to lose his or her patience. And um, it, it um, looks... Um, uh, Mm, hopeless uh, because uh, you ha had all these promises that uh, it's going to be a great thing, uh, but then nothing really happens. Another option that can be possible is when the company lacks some uh, te technical expertise. They try to model some Western model uh, in Russian context, but uh, it's not always um, good for Russia because IT market is a global market and it's not good to copy some products that exist elsewhere because even though if um, you get success at the beginning, then you have to translate all, um, lots of materials, but uh, then you will um, face um, the competition and uh, it's much more difficult. So it's good that we have venture capital market. It's good that we have a, a, a certain ecosystem, but it's important to build, to develop this entrepreneurship culture. Thank you, Natasha. And I'd, lo I'd love to draw your attention to the fact that it's very individual. When you were 
searching for some investments for Kaspersky lab Laboratory. Uh, uh, Alexei Volohov was looking for investments for Yandex, and he managed to find uh, those investments, and uh, Yandex became one of the fashionable and successful projects. Yes, because uh, uh, we worked with some boring um, anti-piracy software. But when Mr. Volochev was looking for investments for Yandex, it was not fashionable at that time. It became fashionable much later, after the uh, collapse of dot-coms. So then uh, Google became next stage. It was not that big at that time. And the same is true about startups. So all the investors think that startups don't have sufficient intellectual qualities, whereas startups uh, uh, think that investors don't understand anything. And that's a natural situation. But um, of course, we need both parties for market development, and they have to find compromise. And from my experience here in Russia, I can say that this is one of the areas where the state can um, uh, play an effective role as a mediator. And without the uh, state's participation, we wouldn't have such uh, rapid development of venture capital. I don't think that RBC uh, is uh, the only player in that process. Of course, we did a lot of work, but I have to say that the uh, state's involvement uh, was very important between 2008-2010. There was a great wave of PR and publicity campaign that uh, um, drew, drew a lot of interest from people that were involved in this sphere. So technological market and entrepreneurship development is, um, is um, uh, common for different states, especially if we speak about the industrial development uh, that we see in the 20th century. So some countries uh, lose their leadership positions. For example, the G uh, Germany is one of the absolute leaders in traditional industrial uh, um, economics, but uh, it's not a leader in post-industrial economics. And then um, the UK had very um, strong positions uh, in the industrial period. So I'd love to ask my question to the representative of the government of um, of uh, the state which cannot be considered a leader in technological development. I, uh, for example, know that Arduino is Italian project and it's one of the uh, rapid growing business uh, um, businesses. So what they have for 3D printing is amazing. It's a platform for 3D printing. So, Stefan, it, it's my question for you. Italian government in the prioritization of the uh, investment uh, support in terms of the traditional and the technological entrepreneurship. And uh, what is the strategy in um, keeping up and growing the positions in the new economical model of the knowledge-based economy. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, the funny thing is that the translation got completely stuck when you asked me the question. But I, 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 I think I got your question anyway. Um, sorry. Um, uh, first, let me let me just just uh, introduce myself for a second. 
I'm, I'm actually uh, taking a top position in the Ministry of, of, of Economic Development, and I'm, the Ministry of Economic Development is the one who designed in the last couple of years a new fully-fledged legislation which is helping new businesses, particularly new innovative startups, to set up, to grow, and to, and to, and to get capital and credit. Um, so I'm here also, and I will be speaking uh, later on, to present the Italian new, new legislation on, on startups. Um, I'm very glad to be here uh, because I'm, I'm, it was very interesting to, to, you know, to see the Global Entrepreneurship Congress in Moscow. I think it's a, it's a spectacular event. Uh, I think that most of you know that the next uh, Global Entrepreneurship Congress will be held in Milan, in, in Italy. So this is just a good way to you know, create a bridge between Moscow and, and, and Milan and, and Russia and Italy. Uh, first, let me just uh, stress a couple of points I took from the Ernst Young presentation. First, well, it's, it's incredible and spectacular, the, 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 the really the big step that the, the Russian has taken on, on VC. Um, looking at these numbers, um, I was really astonished. Um, Italy, it's, it's, it's lagging behind, um, according to, to this number. We succeeded in the last five years to double our VC market. You succeed in, in, in very few years to, you know, to, 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 to have some, a multiplier by 10, which is really spectacular. Um, obviously, um, we're very disappointed with our figures. We, more or less, Italy moves uh, 120 million in investments in VC every year. Uh, we're very disappointed with these numbers, and we are working hard to, to increase these numbers. Also because um, we think that the, the Italian market, Italian, particularly Italian SMEs market, it's, it's a very thriving, it's a very interesting market. We're talking about something like 100,000 innovative SMEs in Italy. And, and currently, every year, we, we count something like uh, 2,000 new innovative startups coming up in the market. Um, so we think that Italy deserves uh, a particular attention and deserves capital to, to, to boost, to boost such, um, su such a thriving uh, uh, entrepreneurial landscape. Um, what we did as a government, uh, as we, we know that there is, there is this very evident market failure in, in funding startups, um, both in terms of banking credit, because this is another focus maybe this, 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 this panel has to, to address, as well as on, on capital, on equity. Uh, and so we introduced two years ago uh, uh, a number of uh, measures, government measures, because we really thought that there was a, a quite wide uh, space, a quite wide room for government intervention in order to help startups to, to get capital. I just will mention three of these measures. One, Italy is the first country in, in, in Europe to have designed a regulation for equity crowdfunding. So now you can uh, raise capital using internet portals in, in Italy. Uh, it's, it's a completely new thing. Uh, we are experimenting on that. Uh, we are at the early stage of this, of this experiment. Um, but I think that Italy may be a very interesting spot where to experiment such a such thing. And we're, we're very, we will be very delighted to have uh, foreign uh, online portals to, 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 to crowdfund uh, startups uh, in Italy. Secondly, we, we designed um, uh, tax credits on investors in startups, both, both private, like private individuals, in order to push um, angel investor, investors. As you may know, the Italian wealth is pretty much spread across the population. So it was very important to push people to invest money in, in, in new ventures. And secondly, we are pushing a lot, in introducing also very important tax credits on VC funds, as well as on corporate venture capital. We, we see an important uh, um, you know, development in helping big firms to buy and get technology, get innovation, um, exploit spillovers by acquiring New, new ventures and new, and, new, and new startups. And this is another, another uh, important thing. And then we introduced uh, two years ago a sort of fund of funds, which is sponsored by the, by the government. So the government is, 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 is putting money 
on an equal basis with private funds, also international venture capital funds. The government put something like 70 million euros on, 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 on that, and we succeeded in raising something like 200 million dollars on, on, on this. This is starting now, uh, so I think there is a, an important uh, area where the um, Italian VC is, is, is likely to, to improve and to attract, to attract uh, money. Um, we will be speaking uh, also in the, in, the, in, the, in the plenary about this new measure we introduced to attract entrepreneurs to set up new businesses in Italy. And we, are, we, we will present the new Italian startup visa, which is, is, is going to be presented here in Moscow, in order to attract uh, entrepreneurs in Italy. And I will just make a final comment here. Um, I, was, I was really um, positively impressed that in, in, in the presentation um, we, 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 we saw before, you put uh, the, the VC capital market, uh, Russian capital market, perfectly integrated with the European VC capital market. I think this is key. This is key. Cooperation among Europe and Russia on VC is a key thing. And I'm very glad that I take this you know, big message of cooperation among Europe and Russia at this stage. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a very useful information, and it's true that we have common issues, uh, and the, go the Italian government uh, has similar problems, um, just like Russian government. So if you know the details of ecosystem development, uh, Stefan has outlined what um, uh, Russia has been doing in the last few years. Because uh, our company was set up uh, a few years ago using the same model. So we understood very fast that it was not enough. At least this is, there's nothing bad about it. However, it doesn't solve the problem. Only investment activity, activi uh, investment activity only does not create an ecosystem. Uh, investment objects should be developed as well. Funds themselves will not do it. They have other interests. <laughs> so a whole uh, number of development prog uh, programs, including Skolkova, which was meant as uh, for model development. And the measures that were mentioned here on tax credit, the topic connected with special startup visas, this has been discussed more than once. And with the level of um, remuneration for technical specialists, there are special visas for investors in Russia with a certain number of salaries. <coughs> I don't remember uh, the exact figures. However, uh, uh, technical specialists can easily get visas and um, a living permit in Russia. So the measure that is being actively developed and discussed now in the community, in the Russian community, and certain steps are already made in this area. This is connected with borrowed financing of technological startups. There is a special term, venture debt financing. The specific feature of it is the fact that companies that do not have material assets can attract through bank instruments, can attract loans, actually take loans in banks. And the potential of such companies is so big that their own independent venture cabin, uh, credit and bank ecosystem is growing on their um, basis. Uh, there is a, a famous Silicon uh, Valley bank, which now works as a f universal bank servicing technological companies and startups. 
They started 30 years ago as a fund of borrowed funding to in-venture projects. The specific feature is that you can expect a big margin in successful projects. So the loan rate for bridge financing in a venture project is not a matter of principle. Actually, if the project is successful, the loan will be repaid. If it is unsuccessful, the uh, loan will not be repaid at any rate. Now I will discuss this topic in our discussion and talk to Kirill Tikhanov, uh, Vice President of Promsvaz Bank. Bank. Uh, with, what is the situation in the banking system in Russia currently? Because to be sincere, the growth of venture funds is much faster than the growth of bank market. <clears throat> and the potential for new niches, <clears throat> I don't know. Actually, I would be interested in looking at it. To be honest, I've discussed it with many banks, and all of them are interested, and no one is in Russia is prepared to make specific steps, though this instrument in, is already in great demand in the market. Kirill, maybe you could t share your thoughts with us, and we could uh, discuss this as part of our next topic. I will be happy to discuss the experience of Promsvazbank uh, in venture investment. This is a new project to us, too. It's also a startup. <clears throat> if some of those present are working in the banking area, startup looks unusual in uh, banking. The level of risk is quite different. If we have a usual uh, lending for business development, and Russian banks are quite successful in it. Now, it's the buyer's market. In the past, uh, there was a banker, and all entrepreneurs uh, were eager to get financing. Now the situation has changed, and banks are competing, though there is one problem. <clears throat> if you have a growing business, you your chances to get financing for the development of your business are high. However, if you are just starting your business, if you are a startup, your chances are minimal, <clears throat> at least at this stage. <clears throat> I am discussing bank's experience. We decided to make the first step, though <clears throat> we don't finance zero startups now. However, we are prepared to finance projects that are at the beginning stage. And <clears throat> last year, we created uh, venture investments funds together with Apora RSC, and in August, we had first transactions. There is a unique opportunity for entrepreneurs and companies <clears throat> who cannot get classical bank loans based on their uh, based on banks normatives because they don't have sufficient capital <clears throat> or profits and we try to be useful to them we encountered a great number of applications and <clears throat> we do a lot for um, young entrepreneurs, and uh, they are our priority. Uh, n currently, in every district, through our <coughs> specialists, we get uh, potential applications, which we review at the head office, and the projects that satisfy the <coughs> requirements of the fund, we <coughs> talk to uh, the um, uh, owners and are prepared to discuss details of transactions. In addition to funding, 
I would like to note that we <coughs> provide certain consulting services for many in entrepreneurs, especially young. Experience matters a lot. And this experience, our tutors, and we try to invite <coughs> experienced tutors, they discuss um, undercurrents uh, with young entrepreneurs. In Krasnoyarsk, young people got funding for <coughs> the production of cheesecakes. And the tutor was Andrei Korkunov, who shared his experience and offered um, valuable advice, which allowed the young entrepreneurs to avoid errors in future. <coughs> What can I say? This is a very uh, promising subject and uh, for banks. And we decided that we are prepared to experiment with uh, a small number of um, companies. And we allocated 300 million <coughs> rubles for it. and. After working for three or four years, we are prepared to exit. And we then we could finance this business as usual business based on classical technologies, or find a new investor, or sign an agreement with the initiator to buy his share. Well, there are a lot of schemes as to how this can be done. Technically, this occurs as financing on privileged rate. Eight per annum is a very good rate these days. And in advance, we discuss certain conditions for the exit. Uh, banks, um, our bank is not interested in making money. We are interested in helping young entrepreneurs to develop their um, new projects. And then we hope to make an exit with a certain degree of profit. <clears throat> Am I correct in understanding that this is not participating in the capital? It is debt financing, uh, <clears throat> venture debt financing. Actually, we participate in the capital, but not more than 20%. Based on the transaction structure, the legal entity is set up and the venture investment fund is 100 subsidiary of the bank and it uh, participates in the business. We participate in not really in uh, mm, actual management, but we conduct monitoring and in complicated matters, we offer our own solutions, our expert assessment, and the bank has serious specialists who can give <coughs> specific advice based on what they have <coughs> accumulated in classical lending. It is very uh, valuable for young entrepreneurs. I would like to ask, maybe I don't understand you correctly, what you said about 8% per annum. What is 8% per annum? Well, in any case, we participate in the capital. However, the form of funding is through lending by the bank at a privileged rate. The bank gives a loan at the rate of 8%. <coughs> And the new company borrows funds at 8 per annum, and this money remains in the company till the exit. This is an unusual scheme, but it looked most effective at this stage. Well, sometimes you participate in capital and issue a loan. We don't participate in capital because we don't have um, a liquid um, collateral, and we look at this share as collateral. <coughs> I see. This is a kind of convertible loan, right? Yes, they look similar. And in future, we will look at other financing schemes. However, <coughs> Our first borrowers, partners, 
uh, like the scheme because they achieve their main goal. They get cheap funding. They get a partner bank which participates in the project for a year or two, up to five years, and can exit under certain conditions. You said uh, that uh, there is, well, you mentioned consulting. Bank, the bank, uh, in addition to uh, funding, the bank also uh, provides um, tutorship. This is very important, and I would like to ask Vadim, speaking of the big four, consulting of technological startup, is it a perspective um, business or should it be combined with something else? It is a very promising business and it is promising in case we are speaking of a certain flow. Of course, startups themselves, if we speak of big four, Consulting and work with startups uh, will not bring any profit. It just can't. However, this market is very interesting to the big four because everybody wants to work with future Apple, Google, Yandex, and so on. <coughs> this is why consultants are eager to participate in this market and are interested in it. Because when companies reach a certain level of maturity, it's a different story. And consultants make money there together with inventors and founders of the business. I don't know. I could give you certain examples of companies with which we started working when they were still <coughs> very small businesses, even in Russia. These are Belru company, Kiwi, IBS Luxoft is a well-known company. They are playing in another league now. However, quite recently they were startups and their business model was not clear. It wasn't uh, really uh, obvious that they will make money. At that moment, when they were startups, did they have money to pay international consultants based on international standards? Well, this work <coughs> was not paid to a full extent. It's a kind, so it's a kind of uh, investment of a big consultant in, gr in growing his potential uh, customer. It is not financial, but it is significant as well. We invest our, not on our resources, our knowledge at that stage. It is, a very, it is very interesting information. I've always been sure that financial investments are just part of the necessary investments, and the success of a business is determined not by financial parameters. And the existence of investors who are prepared to invest their expertise, well, normally, Tutors do that. At the previous session, we discussed acceleration programs, and the key element of any acceleration program are mentors who are prepared to invest their time, experience, and competences in a new company <coughs> based on different conditions, sometimes on a voluntary basis, sometimes for a potential share in future profits of this company. Now I will probably have a question for Natasha. 
So from the technological and entrepreneur's point of view, you said that you have monitored market and uh, you focus on it, uh, even if um, you're not uh, doing M&A, uh, even if you don't buy something, but you involve some companies uh, as partners. So are you ready to share your resources, your competences and time with those companies? Are you ready to grow them as your future partners? in order to um, uh, expand your own business in the future. Yes, of course, we always participate in the equity because otherwise there's no point. So we try to get the blocking package. So we help those companies a lot. And our help uh, usually involves different things. Of course, it depends on the co company, but usually it's uh, marketing and sales, uh, those uh, areas that uh, we are very experienced in. Uh, like we already have this uh, machine. Uh, and once you add another product into this process, it's working very well. Of course, uh, um, there are different questions what we're going to do with this product, how we're going to pre position it, pr this product, what the strategy, whether the, um, the sales channel is the same or different. So there's a lot of exchange. And I can give you an example. Two years ago, we acquired majority uh, part in uh, Ego Secure company, which is a G Germany, German company. We um, um, It took us a year for rebranding. Um, uh, um, this company was a, uh, a strange company that didn't have a good position in the market. We turned it into a great agency. We um, 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 in, um, um, developed a very nice logo, um, which is a v very memorable logo. And now it, say, uh, it uh, sells their products in 30 countries in the world. Um, so 90% of their turnover comes from Germany. But still, uh, they uh, do their work in India, in Russia, and other uh, countries. There are 30 countries. So hopefully, they'll get money from all those countries. So it's, it was a big breakthrough for the company and they couldn't uh, make it themselves so we were like a helping hand uh, and um, we helped them achieve that breakthrough so we can raise a company onto the new level so um, you not only gave money but also helped and said what they should do yes then my next question is for Stefan about the role of the state in the development of such uh, um, demand for technological companies. Uh, so we have heard a few examples now uh, showing how the investments uh, uh, um, um, can have a form of investments or growing a business or growing a customer um, for uh, yourself. So. Actually, the state usually gives money, and no, uh, there's nothing that they can, uh, and nothing else that they can do. But uh, the state always can con uh, collect money, and the total system of uh, um, um, the government uh, um, management is about collecting money and then distributing money. Of course, it's not uh, smart money. Um, so the government doesn't really care about competences, and I guess it's true not only for Russia. So if we speak about the development and interaction, uh, and if we speak about public and private partnerships in technological entrepreneurship, does Italy consider itself advanced ecosystem? Or there are still some problems that have to be solved because uh, all countries move into this direction. But I can't say that uh, you know, we see success everywhere. Stefan, what do you think? Well, um, you, you mentioned a broad series of issues uh, which are you know, at, at the heart of uh, any policymaker. Um, when, when we designed the new legislation for startups, we, we did that because it was pretty clear that if you want to sustain innovation, if you want to sustain technological transfer, if you want to sustain entrepreneurship, you should have a legislation which helps the ecosystem first 
and then the startup as a second tier benefit. Um, and that's key. That's becoming key. And, 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 and we see more and more different governments in different countries which are competing somehow on this kind of legislation. And I think, and I think it's, it's, it's a good competition in order to attract. Uh, we design this, this legislation in a pretty different way than usual uh, government-oriented policies. It was not designed to provide direct subsidies or direct transfers to any of the, of the, you know, of the players in the ecosystem, but was specifically designed to help the ecosystem as a whole to become more attractive and to be, um, become more you know, friendly uh, to the setup of, 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 new, of new businesses. So we started you know, to help startups to build up their businesses. We, we, for example, we help a lot startups to get credit. Uh, we introduced a sort of uh, public guarantee on, 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 on bank credit, which is covering 80% of the, of, the, of the credit that the startup gets from, from banks. But this, this was a way to, you know, to involve banks in giving credit to the to the startups, not helping startups directly, we designed all, all the, the, the the legislation, the tax credits, which were designed to help investors to put money in the startup. Was also designed to, to you know to to, to strengthen the, the the ecosystem which is which is around. Um, consider, um, considering, for example, consultants, we designed. Uh, an, an interesting measure in order to help startups to get good consultants by paying consultants through work for equity, for example, which is a cr crucial, a crucial instrument to have good, uh, good services, good professional services, and help startups to build up the businesses. For example, to develop marketing tools, which is which is a key thing, which was underlined before. So I think that governments approaching this, this, this area, this field, has to be very much pro-market and abandon you know, direct subsidies, direct grants. Uh, this is all gone, I think. But it, it has to help the market on a sort of matching ground to sustain these new, these new businesses. And that's exactly what we do with the Fund of Funds, which is for each money that the government is putting, there are at least each euro the government is putting, there are at least two euros that the private so it's, it's, it's designed as a, as a purely private-public uh, partnership. Thank you. This, it's, it, you really made a very important point, and um, it's uh, very important that uh, Stefan mentioned public guarantees for loans provided for startups. So if we try to develop a similar instrument here in Russia, because we don't have such an instrument, we have public guarantees for large investment projects, for example, um, uh, Rosnano and Vneshikonom Bank line of products. But speaking about venture um, um, loans, venture capital loans, we don't really have anything. So do you think it uh, uh, could become a significant stimulus for banking community? Of course, we have very good successful practices with guarantee funds that support small and medium business, and it's been a very effective tool. Speaking about current businesses, um, we are uh, the, the foundation is ready to share the risks 50 by 50 with banks. And speaking about startups, we uh, uh, basically are responsible for 100% of risks. So we'll be happy to share these risks with some public fund. But the question is, if the state is ready to participate in such a project because there's a very high risk of losing this money. If we speak about classical um, funds for support, of course, the bank has uh, some expertise and there are minimum risks, whereas if we speak about startups, the risk is much higher. 
Well, that's why um, uh, this business is called venture business, but the potential of the capacity is much higher um, uh, as related to investment returns. So we know good, um, very successful examples of investors that uh, um, have experienced exponential growth, even if they invested very small money. But uh, um, uh, if some investors um, implemented very successful projects, well, we need to work a little bit longer. and. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to show some good practices and uh, afterwards uh, uh, we'll be happy to uh, promote this initiative uh, to discuss with the Ministry for Economic Development uh, um, the opportunity to um, uh, use these funds and um, uh, will show the statistics and the dynamics related to such projects. So it can't be done uh, overnight. We have to show some statistics, some figures, and then we'll be able to initiate this process. So I'll be happy to continue talking offline on this because we think that the Russian market has reached the point when we need new financial instruments that other developed markets already have, whereas Russia hasn't yet developed those. So uh, we focus on um, the, the areas um, that are difficult um, to explore law for private uh, investors. So um, we focus on those sectors, on those industries when the private um, investors uh, are not available. And um, therefore, it would be interesting for us to explore more possibilities. So I have seen uh, some hands raised, so there are some questions definitely in the audience. Can you first introduce yourself and uh, um, mention uh, the person that you want to ask your question to? Can you hear me? Yes. You should speak in the microphone. Uh, Vladimir Yegorov, European uh, Commission for Economic Relations. My question is for Kirill. I work with venture capital and commercial banks. So I'd love to ask you a couple of things. I'd love to mention, though, that I'm against um, universal commercial banks participating in uh, venture capital. And I can give you an example of Alpha Bank. And Alpha Bank is bigger than uh, Promsvest Bank. And uh, they um, uh, closed venture capital fund, uh, not, not only venture capital fund, but project financing division because the risks were very high. So this, my question is informal. Your subsidiary company, Venture Capital Fund, what funds do you invest into that company? Is it the, um, um, the bank's funds or you use your client's money as well? And then it means that um, the, the risks, the risks um, for um, that money um, is much higher. Well, speaking about Alpha Bank, it has not become the leader. This, uh, 
they, um, the, their loan portfolio was 120 million rubles only. So it shows that their portfolio is not uh, uh, that um, big. We work with small business projects. And we don't speak about approaches used for investment projects and the risks that um, we take um, is something that we can expect. We use only our equity, equity of shareholders. 300 million rubles maybe is not that uh, big uh, amount of money, but it uh, uh, means about 60 successful projects, 5 million rubles each. And uh, again, I need some time before I give you some mm, figures and dynamics and statistics. We were not trying to evade um, certain regulations. We supported um, youth entrepreneurs. We uh, gave uh, young people iPads, MacBook, and other things. But then uh, they asked uh, if we could support them not uh, with these valuable prizes, but provide some beneficial funding. And then we realized that the venture capital fund is something that would be very interesting for them. And that's how our pro project started. We start. We um, declared it last year in February, and we said that we were going to develop it um, rapidly. So in August, we had first transactions. Have I answered your questions? I'd love to add something to this. Um, uh, I am not a supporter of universal commercial banks uh, getting involved with venture capital, but I know that uh, the um, international market has certain instruments and uh, um, the fund of uh, uh, borrowing uh, funding are available, and this is the international practice. That's what the developed uh, markets have, and banks participate in that actively. So it's not only about supporting venture capital fund, because this is uh, this means um, a different uh, um, set of competences. So speaking about borrowing, uh, it, it's somewhere on the boundary, and um, banks do have a very valuable experience and expertise. And there was also a question from Daniel. Can I speak English? Dan, Daniel Satinsky, I work for a company called Foresight Science and Technology. We evaluate early stage technologies. We do about 500 evaluations every year. So what we have found, and I think it's true throughout, is that most technologies, most entrepreneurs are technology driven and not market driven as um, as uh, Natalia Kaspersky said earlier, and um, it's a very few scientists who are capable of being business people. And so either the venture funds take the technology and hand them to some capable business people to make a business out of it, or you have a unique individual and the fund invests in that individual and provides them the resources to become successful. So it seems to me that financial institutions will shape the entrepreneurial landscape much more by being limited by the number of entrepreneurs there are that are capable of being invested in or the availability of entrepreneurs to not act just as mentors, but to in fact develop the business that a scientist themselves can't de deliver. So it seems to me the limiting factor is entrepreneurs, but that institutions, financial institutions play a key role in matching that expertise and those entrepreneurs uh, with the investment opportunity itself. I don't know if maybe you want to comment on that um, theme. Daniel, thank you very much, but that's kind of... But Question, actually, uh, I, I completely agree with you, and this is definitely a, a problem. However, I would say that it's more or less common problem, and there is another side and of this aspect, uh, another aspect of this problem, the uh, issue of the technological multinational corporations. Right? There are very few. 
национальными корпорациями. В России очень мало компаний, которые бы работали на... There is Abbey, there are parallels, but, uh, frankly, outside of the scope of IT, you will really find a company who is globally market focused. Maybe uh, IPG Photonics, I don't know other one, right? Uh, and uh, one of the set of the competences for what you call the market-driven approach for the entrepreneurs is definitely the experience and uh, expertise coming from the uh, companies with a global focus. Uh, I'm not sure that financial system will be able to provide such level of expertise and uh, competencies as the technological multinationals do have. And that's one of the reasons, by, by the way, why in Skolkovo project the key partners from the technological uh, side are playing such an important role because this is the way of uh, transferring uh, skills and uh, competences in this uh, area, growing up the balance between the um, technological and market-driven approaches. That's, that's my answer, if you... Colleagues, is there any question? Dear colleagues, do you have any questions? If none, if you don't, Oh, yes, you have. A Union of Journalists of Moscow. It's a question to you or Kirill Tikhonov. Once I was a student at the economic uh, faculty of Moscow University, the problems of venture investments in the 80s when we studied the experience of foreign countries. I would like uh, to ask what is the difference of modern venture um, financing or are you developing along the same lines? Maybe you have an answer, or Kirill has it. <clears throat> I will provide a brief answer. The principles of venture financing were formulated in the United States uh, in the 50s and in the 60s. It was the time when the first venture funds appeared in the United States. Most of technological businesses were born in the United States. However, there were companies in pre-venture period that were growing in the uh, during the war and the whole industry with semiconductors and computer technologies was formed. <clears throat> simultaneously and together with the venture market. Currently, basic principles of venture market development are the same. However, the instruments are much more intricate. Fifty years ago, <coughs> many instruments that are used in global markets now were not uh, known and uh, <clears throat> Russia is lagging behind from this process for a number of political and economic reasons. The first attempt to implement venture funds in Russia were made in the <clears throat> in mid <clears throat> uh, uh, 90s and the market was not prepared. <clears throat> And these funds remained ineffective or were transferred to private equity. <coughs> A number of successful venture investments was made in the early 90s, and we uh, can see the example of Yandex, and really it started developing in the past five years. In terms of instruments, we are lagging behind by five or ten years from the developed markets. <coughs> and this lag is shrinking, though there are, of course, problems. <coughs> Stefano mentioned a very important thing. <coughs> The fact that in global business, technological business, well, it is global, but it also it is also 
um, fluid because it doesn't have any material assets. When all the assets are in the heads of people, business goes where it is uh, more convenient to conduct it. So <clears throat> the it is important to create the best conditions for business in your company. The task was set by the president in the first May, uh, May decrees. However, we need to work at the improvement of uh, business climate and the effectiveness <coughs> will be clear a little later. Based on the previous year, <coughs> the regulations were quite impressing, better than I expected. <coughs> a leap by 100 positions within a short period of time <coughs> at the period of economic and political instability is not well this is not quite obvious whether this will be realized however there is an understanding that this is necessary everybody understands this and all the countries will compete for creating better conditions for improving business. The, most of the investments are in human talent for the sake of those entrepreneurs who have come to our session. I would like to thank everybody who spoke uh, for their presentations, for this interesting discussion. I would like to thank the audience that has been sitting quietly for more than an hour and a half and showed interest. And I would like to wish all of you big successes in this difficult road of entrepreneurial development. Thank you.